Hello, Ron Mithril here once again, and I've just captured a Lotad. Hey y'all, this is Opsa World Roam, and I guess I just caught this weird old acorn thing. Oh come on, put in a little more effort than that. I know you're my opposite dimensional counterpart and everything, but surely you know at least something about Pokémon. It even says C dot right up there. I'll hush. Ahem, <clears throat> right. Uh, anyway, we've found ourselves in an interesting situation. You and I have both caught a version-exclusive Pokémon. We'll never be able to get the other one on our individual games. Y'all are way too excited about this. Oh, come on, it's just for one video. Work with me here. Alright, alright. So, what are we gonna do about it? Well, that's what VBA Link is for. What in tarnations is VBA Link? VBA Link is basically a fan-made offshoot of Visual Boy Advance, one of the more popular Game Boy Advance emulators out there. Basically, when the source code was made open source, they decided to add a new feature to it, allowing two instances of Visual Boy Advance to run at the same time and connect to each other for things like battling and trading between compatible games. So what you're saying is it's basically like having two Game Boy Advance systems hooked up with one of them there Game Link cables. Exactly, yes. Now there is a good bit of setup that goes into it. Before anyone asks, I'm not going to actually show where to get anything used in this video. Finding it, yeah, that's up to you. This is purely a how-to on how to actually use VBA Link. So, let's get right to it. The first step is to rename the save files. Now. If you do all of your playing right from the start in VBA Link, this isn't something that you really need to worry about. But if, like me, you do most of your playing and recording in normal Visual Boy Advance, you will need to take this step. Keep in mind VBA Link is meant to have multiple copies running at the same time. Thus, it needs a way to tell what save file goes to player 1 and which goes to player 2, and that's what we're going to take care of now. So at this point, what you want to do is open up File Explorer. You need to find the folder where the games you're using are being stored so we can get at the save files. Now here's one tricky bit to this step. You actually need the file extensions to be on display like they are here, and by default I don't think they're usually on display. You might have to do some fiddling around to get them to appear like this. Unfortunately, since I've never used an operating system beyond Vista, I don't really know what individual steps you might need to take to get them to show up, so I'm afraid for that part, you're on your own. Now what we need are the save files, the ones with the .sav extension, like this one, and this one. You may also have some files in this folder with the extension .sgm. Those are save states, we don't really care about those right now. So once we have these highlighted, we need to take them into a temporary directory, like this one right here. Going in here, we need to change the file extensions. I'm playing Sapphire, so that'll be the Player 1 save. Hey, how come you get to be Player 1? Because it's my channel. In your dimension, you can be Player 1. Oh, alright. So, we go to rename this, and we just change the file extension to .sa1. This lets VBA Link know that this is Player 1's file. Now, once you try and save that change, you'll get a warning box saying that if you change a file name extension, the file may become unusable, and it wants you to make sure that this is something you want to do. In this case, yes, we know what we're doing, it's harmless, so we just say yes. We then do the same thing with the Ruby save file here, except we change the extension to .sa2. This lets it know that's Player 2's save file. Once we have all this done, we select both files and move them back to the main folder. And there we go. Step one is complete. The next step is to disable the pause while inactive feature. What the heck does that mean? Well, my impatient friend, I'm getting to that. By default, Visual Boy Advance is set to pause if you go to another window. This is basically so that if, say, you're talking to somebody on Instant Messenger while playing a game, if you go over there to respond, enemies suddenly don't get free hits on you. But here's the problem. 
You can only have one active window at a time, and since you need two Visual Boy Link windows open at the same time, they constantly have to know what the other window is doing, so they have to constantly be active. <clears throat> yes, welcome to my desktop. Like it? Okay, so actually setting both windows to constantly be active isn't so hard. Just go to Options, Emulator, and where it says Pause when in active window, make sure that is not checked. You do need to make sure and do this for both instances of VBA Link. And we're good to go. But hang on a minute here. If both windows are constantly active, how do you move in one game and not in the other? Well spotted! And so we have step three, setting separate controls. Indeed, since both games are running at the same time, you need to set it so that one game's controls don't interfere with the controls of the other game. Setting the separate controls admittedly can be slightly misleading. What you want to do is go to Options, Joypad, Configure. Now here it gives you options for 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ignore those. On both instances of VBA Link, you're going to want to configure the controls for Controller 1. VBA Link is set to where each instance of the program basically has its own settings file that keeps everything straight. Just for a quick display here, here's how I usually have my controls set so they don't interfere. The blue keys being my default controls for player 1, and the red keys being the ones I use for player 2. I just shifted most of the controls to the right a little bit of what I normally use, and used the number pad arrows instead of the main arrows for movement. Simple enough, really. And so, with all the setup taken care of, all that's left is what we originally set out to do. One last thing to keep in mind. Keep track of which window is which. I always keep player 1 further on the left and player 2 further on the right. Well, I guess that's simple enough to keep track of. And since we set the controls as we did, I can move freely, and so can you. Huh, so can. So I guess we just go in this here Pokemon Center. That's right. Up the escalator on the left. And talk to the girl behind the center counter. Once the game saves, thanks to VBA Link, the games should find each other and we can connect. Now occasionally you might get a freeze. The program is still a little bit finicky sometimes, if that happens, just shut off both copies of VBA Link, boot it up again, and try again. So here we go, we get to enter. Now we just position ourselves. And we're linked. So, I'll trade you a Lotad for a C dot. Okay, sounds fine with me. And thus, the trade is beginning. This is really weird. Yeah, even, even I'll admit that one. And there, the trade is complete. Once it's finished saving, we can leave. And now we just have to exit. And we're done. The game automatically saves once you finish with a trade, so we're pretty much finished here. Once I've finished whatever it is I'm using VBA Link for, I usually go ahead and convert the save file back to one that can be read by normal Visual Boy Advance. Reason being, VBA Link doesn't usually seem to record quite as cleanly for me. 
I don't know if it's the extra coding in the program or what, but usually if I try and record it, it'll make the audio skip, things like that. So, it's a simple reversal of the process. Find the SA1 file, copy it to the temp directory, and change the extension back to SAV. Now, technically, if you're comfortable enough with it, you don't really have to keep copying it to a temporary directory. You can just rename the extension back in the, uh, the normal root directory here and not have all these copies floating around. I just do it that way just because, you know, it never hurts to have a backup just in case something does go wrong. But, like I said, if you're comfortable enough with it, you can just rename them here. No problem. And so, with the save file converted back, here we are in normal Visual Boy Advance, and I have my LOTAD and my CDOT. Everything worked out perfectly. Alright, I'll admit it, that's pretty slick. So does it work with normal Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, too? Well... Alas, no, it does not. Well, that's kind of weird, ain't it? While, yes, it is kind of a strange omission, I believe it does have some basis and limitations of the original hardware. I seem to remember encountering this problem with the original system. The Game Boy Advance, it could certainly play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but it was kind of set to read the link cable itself a bit differently, due to different data structures in Game Boy Advance games. As such, it could play original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but it didn't quite know how to connect them. So, really, I think that's about it. So we're done here? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, good. So you gonna LP Mega Man X yet, or what? Really? You're going there? Well, come on, it's better than all this stuff. Well, I don't know, I've got some pretty cool Pokémon here. Have a look. Now see, what kind of stupid names are those? Lairtim? Mayor? Aw, oh, shoot! <coughs> Getting him to say his name backwards is the only way to make him go back to his home dimension. So, anyway, yes, this was a demonstration of how to use VBA Link. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was useful for everybody who was asking me how to use it. And I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well. So, if we save our games and get ready to trade, it should find the other game due to the VBA link. Or it could freeze. That's another possibility. Well, bugger. <laughs>